welcome back to BRMC's Healthy Connections. I'm Donna McMullen, your host today, and joining me is Lori King McCracken from First Step. She does all of their marketing all over, not only Arkansas, but I believe you go. We go to Missouri. Missouri as well. And that's by car. And they, now yeah. um, we also do, you know, marketing by mailings and phone calls, and sure. we cover more states. And um, each time we send someone or we look for someone to get a treatment, we also send our information to them just in case they need to send the person here to Baxter first. It keeps you busy running all over. It does. <laughs> Along um, with that brand new beautiful well, baby know. girl. <laughs> uh, but one thing we've learned is that before someone can go into treatment, they have to go through, through medical stabilization. Right. That's what we've been talking about today is the BRMC medical stabilization program, mm -hmm. which we have right in the hospital. Uh, it is not in a separated area. Mm -hmm. It is uh, blended right in with the regular population. Mm -hmm. And the folks are there from three to five, three days. five days. We talked about the youngest so far that you've seen is 18, 18. and up to 83. 83. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, tell us more about some, some of the things in the last few years since you've been doing this. That um, How many folks have you treated? We have treated over 200 patients. And that's not only the individual, but we also have helped the families you know, that's had to go through um, Educating Edu the family. Educating is, you know, is getting them re and resources such as Al-Anon to help them because even though the person has been sick, you know, whether it's been an alcohol addiction or mm -hmm. a pain medication addiction, the family's had to live with these people. Sure. So they've heard in many ways, whether it's physical or mental. And then, you know, you've got children involved, you've got spouses, loss of job. It, it can put many strains on a family. Sure. So you're uh, letting the the folks know about Al-Anon mm -hmm. and about um, all the various support groups that are available to them so that they can understand what their loved one's going through mm -hmm. and how they can help their loved one the most in the future. In other words, don't be an enabler, don't, right. uh, that kind and, and of that thing. And that I think is the biggest thing. Is yeah, yeah. So, um, and we also have a resource list that we give each patient or if we have someone that calls or we even have people come to the hospital that just they just want to talk because they're scared and they just want information and we have a resource list that we've gathered um, in our community whether it's the food bank whether it's legal aid uh, counselors oh wonderful um, that we give each person right. AA, NA, Al-Anon um, just so they can go home and and kind of digest everything that that they're going through and sure. if, if they're not ready to come to us they can maybe go to counseling and see if that works for them, and then if not, then you know they can make the first step and call, call Baxter Regional. So when they go through um, with the hospital then, what they would do is they can, once they've gotten all their paperwork processed, they've gone through their insurance, and, and you found out if they're mm -hmm. eligible or not to use their insurance, uh, and let, or if they're private pay, right. that, that type of thing. Once that's all been done, then they are put into a room at the mm -hmm. hospital. Go to admissions. Mm -hmm. um, we schedule time. It's just like going to the doctor. Um, it's a Monday through Friday. Usually we schedule our patients for between 9 and 3. Okay. And they come in, they go to admissions, and as soon as the admissions is done, they're great about calling us. We come down, get the patients, you know, their belongings, and we take them straight to the room. Mm -hmm. Get them all settled we in. We do, we get them all settled Answer all room. those questions mm -hmm. they've probably got. Yes. And kind of alleviate some of those fears and yes. concern. You're just the one to do it, Laura. Oh, well, you thanks. and Miss Christy. And uh, just absolutely wonderful well, with you. dealing with the folks that, that come through. And I'm, I'm wondering right now, do you think we're going to see more... Um, Holidays are fast approaching, and those are all Stressful. not always. Yeah, those are not always the best of time for many people. And well, especially where the economy is. Sure. Um, job, you know, job loss and things like that. Well, just stress, you know. Anyway, sure. even if you have a family and you've got, you know, how planning, am I going to buy the kids toys? You know, how just am I going to the everyday expense? You know, your electric, all of that kind of things, yep. and then integrating new expenses to try to make everyone happy at the holidays because we want everyone to be happy at the holidays. Sure. <laughs> so sometimes the the stress can you know lead to other things. Sure. Alcohol. More alcohol abuse. More pain drug medication abuse. Sure. abuse. Yeah. Do you see a lot of um, the uh, over medication um, abuse in the elderly? Is that something Probably. that you're seeing more of too? Probably because they've been you know they were once given medication due to a muscle strain or just back problem back or something. Yes. Yeah. And they continue to take the medication and then let's just say they miss a dose or mm -hmm. they they 
want to quit taking that tenth pill that they, you know they've got sure. all the other kinds of pills to take, and they try to take that. Well, their body's so used to taking that every day, you know, it starts reacting. And where is it? Yeah. 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 Um, and so their body starts aching, and you know, they can have nausea, vomiting, muscle cramping, um, tremors. It's their body saying, "Where is you know? I'm used to taking. I'm I'm used to that every day. Right. And where's it at? Yep. So I don't, like I don't think I'd ever want to give up my morning coffee. coffee. I exactly. have a feeling the headaches <laughs> that would follow. I do. I might have a little shaky. <laughs> yeah, headaches that would follow might not be real pleasant. So so we we try to explain to the individual this is not a walk in the park. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. It's, there's going to be some, you know, a mental part after you get to the physical because you're used to, like every day when you put your shoes on, mm -hmm. you're used to, you're, you have a routine every single day and that's just one thing that you, you're going to have to leave out of your daily routine. Right. And so, you know, you take 10 years of undoing something. Sure. It's not going to happen overnight. No, not going to happen so, in those three to five days. But right. with additional counseling. And that's why we recommend counseling and to continue. Sure, sure. And that's the role the hospitalists play then, once the person is actually admitted into the mm -hmm. hospital, is their role primarily to make sure that the uh, symptoms and side effects that they're, and the withdrawal that they're going to be going through are held to a minimum as, right. far, as, as far as what the patient is feeling. Right. Okay. To get them through. And usually three to five days will do that with the body. Yes. Yeah. They, you know, it'll get, it'll get them through the physical withdrawal, mm -hmm. but then we have the the counseling to help with the, the mental aspect sure. of it and just getting a new routine and a new, a it's new lifestyle. A good 30 day, 30 to 90 days is what I've always read mm -hmm. and studied as far as changing a behavior. It is. And it's just, you know, absolutely repetitious. You've got to not do putting that shoe on each mm -hmm. morning. Oh, I know. So. <laughs> or that new, that new diet or lifestyle yeah, yeah, change. Yeah. You just have to get used we to We no it. longer use the word diet. <laughs> it's a lifestyle <laughs> change. So. What else yeah. can you tell us? Um, well, just a few statistics. A first step, we've probably had, on, you know, 60 to 40 male to female. Um, and then as far as the alcohol to narcotics, we've probably had seen 60% to 40%, you know, narcotic to alcohol. Really? Yeah. Are the narcotics being higher? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And is that more prevalent than in the younger age group well, or the older? Well, I would think more toward the older mm -hmm. because we really, I think we see more 40 and up, 50 and up, mm -hmm. and those people are usually, they've, you know, they've been given pain medication for a car wreck 10 years ago, yeah. or, you know, back pain, and I've learned car wrecks will do a number on a body. Yeah. According yep. to the... Yep, so they're just, they've gotten into a habit, mm -hmm. they've well, taught their body. Their body has developed, you know, it needs more. Sure, sure. And it's, so they, they take, they increase them for the months over, they're out of their their amount that they were prescribed and because yeah. their bodies developed this, you know, taller tolerance for yeah, one so, lower dose. So right. you just have to keep increasing it overall. Right. So, so what a great service that the hospital is able to provide through this first step program. And if we could just eliminate that stigmatism that goes along with it, um, that people just don't want others to know that they're going through, that they're struggling with this. Um, but you are, you know, so you are drawing from as far away as Missouri. That Missouri, uh-huh. Um, and as south as Pine Bluff. Yeah, yeah. So. And we don't, you know, we see all people. We see professionals. We see students. This goes right across the economic board. This has nothing to do with... It has nothing to do with... If you're... I think sometimes people make the mistake of thinking that drug and alcohol uh, is equated with your educational level mm -hmm. and your, or lower income you, yeah, and your it's income nothing. level. Um, yeah. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the, it, does some it? Some of the people, yes, yeah. nothing to do with it. I think people would be very surprised sometimes if they knew who was sort of uh, you know, we, going through some struggles. We've so. seen professionals, elderly, housewives, students. Mm -hmm. um, no, just people that are mm -hmm. struggling with a behavior and that's hurting them. Right. So, but so. thank goodness, first step is there. Thank you. Yes, so. that's very true. And in 2011, i um, going to go ahead and continue on with the program, with the hospitalists, and mm -hmm. um, what can people, who can people call right now? What number do they need to call uh, between now and the... the uh, especially through the holidays, who, who can they call? They can call the hospital, um, just the main number, 508-1000. Okay. Or they can call us directly at 508-7590. 508-7590. 
508-7590. All right. So please, if you're listening uh, and viewing out there, if you uh, need help, please seek it. 508-1000 or 508-7590 for the First Step program. Um, Lori, I know that you oftentimes are the one answering the phone. So yes. this beautiful young woman here is uh, right there ready to help um, for those that are in need. And if we don't answer, leave a message. There's two of us. There's so we're... And Miss Christy Stuffelbeam. Yes. And so we will return the phone call just as soon as we get it. All right. Yeah. All right. Lori, I want to thank you so well, much for joining me today. This makes a can make a huge impact and a change in someone's live uh, for a much better quality of life. So I want to thank you for joining me on the program today. Keep up the great work. First well, Step you. is wonderful. Thank so you. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with more from BRMC's Healthy Connections. Mm -hmm.